Hello everyone, welcome to Celebrating Black Excellence. I'm your digital host, Carlton T. Clay. It is a privilege to be here with our next guest, Ms. Mara Gale. How are you doing today, Mara? I am absolutely marvelous. Yes, I love it how you use that brand name, using it in there that all part. the time. <laughs> That part. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, thank you so much for being here with us on Celebrating Black Excellence. We definitely appreciate you. Let's get started with your career. How did you get started with acting? Well, that is a story. So let me break that down for you. In high school, yep, it goes way back. I <laughs> had a horrible memory. So I used to create raps in order to retain information. We ended up doing a rap album in high school. And as a result of that, a teacher, unbeknownst to me, submitted me for a nationwide rap contest. Mm. And I won it. It was Curtis Blow doing a nationwide contest. I won it and it paid my way to college. Once I was in college, I could sing. And so I was majoring in actually broadcasting. And a friend of mine who was doing a stage play was like, hey, can you come and audition? I was like, I don't know what that is. And uh, he said, you just read these lines and then you sing because it's a musical. And there were very few blacks at my school that were in the uh, theater department. So I sang and I was reading the script and it felt like breathing. And the director of the play, a man by the name of George Penny, invited me to an invitation only class for juniors. But I was a freshman. Mm. And so that forced my craft to grow in leaps and bounds. And the rest, as they say, is history because I got bit by the bug and then created a major that combined television, theater, dance, and music called theatrical broadcasting. And if I was an entrepreneur back then, <laughs> I would be making money off of it because people are actually graduating in my major now at Southern Illinois University in Carbondale. That's awesome. Instead of history, I want to say her story. Cause her story, yes. that part. Yes. <laughs> 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 well, definitely. Um, let's talk about your very first professional acting role. Like, how was that experience for you? Well, it was very, very interesting. Oh, well, let me start off. I was doing industrial films before I started doing regular films, but there was a a, a group of black filmmakers in Atlanta, and I can't recall the name of it right now. Uh, I don't know if it was Black Filmmakers Inc. or Black Filmmakers Production, but there was a guy named Narcel Reedus and a young lady named Paula Felder and a guy named Joe Jowers. And the three of them were doing this collective work. And Paula Jowers uh, cast me in a film where I was the lead and I had a love scene. And at the time I was about 190, 195 pounds, which she cast me in that role, but I wanted to be slimmer for my first role. So I hired a personal trainer. And let me say this, this was back in the late 80s, early 90s mm -hmm. at the time where HIV and AIDS had kind of just hit the scene. When I showed up to, to our rehearsal, our first read through rehearsal, and I had lost 55 pounds, she immediately ushered me to the back room asking if I was sick. Mm. And I was like, no, it was my it's my lead role. And I have a love scene and vanity kicked in. So I lost the weight. And uh, and so that was the very first uh, role that I had in in film as a lead. And that was in Atlanta in a film called Babies Coming Home. And uh, it it was the introduction to something amazing, and I never stopped. Uh, after working at CNN Headline News, I retired in 1990 to act full time, and I never looked back and haven't done anything but that since. And you have been working and working and working because we see you. I know when I watch TV, I'm like, that's Mara. That, that's Mara. There. That's <laughs> you are just all over the place. And since then, you've been had so many roles. Um, bigger. Saints and Sinners, Ordinary Joe, and recently Kingdom Business. Um, yes. What has been like your favorite role to portray thus far? Oh gosh, favorite role. You know, I, I love playing crazy. <laughs> so Saints and Sinners, what, that crazy role was, was actually the bomb for me. I absolutely loved trans uh, you know, kind of transforming from this crazy lady to this sane lady because in Saints and Sinners, they had me drugged. For those who saw the show, they had me drugged. And then by the time I was off drugs, of course, I was sane. So that was the fullest arc. Uh, however, when I did Their Eyes Were Watching God back in, 
that was a while ago, like early 2000s mm -hmm. um, with Halle Berry, Terrence Howard, Oprah produced it. It was supposed to be a six day shoot for me. But the director, when they met me, they told my agent they fell in love with me and wanted to extend my shoot date. So I actually shot 26 days. Wow. It went from a five or six day shoot to 26 days, bought a house off of that gig. So that was the most. Uh, and, and of course, got to work with some amazing people and build some relationships. I actually wrote a book while I was filming that particular show, wrote a book in 21 days and I was shooting 26 days. So that was the most memorable. And then the most iconic would probably be, I, I played Lawrence Fishburne's wife in an Amazon movie called, um, uh, gosh, what's the name? Under the Stadium Light. They changed it. It used to be Brothers Keeper. And it's still available for streaming. I just got some residuals off it, so I know folks are streaming it. But it's called <laughs> Under the Stadium Lights. And uh, I got an opportunity to play his wife. So that was, you know, phenomenal. Awesome. Because he's so generous. Yes, yes, definitely. Uh, well, again, <laughs> congratulations on everything you're doing. Such an inspiration. It's so awesome. Now, let's talk about, because we have to talk about this, the difference mm -hmm. between the craft of acting and the entertainment business because there is mm -hmm. a difference. So can you yes. please kind of talk about that for people who are watching? Okay, so the craft of acting is doing what it is that I, what we do, which is uh, get a script or get sides and then break down that character, create backstories, biography, information about the character and bring that character to life. Mm -hmm. So for doing that, we either go to school, we go to classes, we hone our craft, we practice it, and then we, you know, we tape, we audition in person, or we actually are booked and we do the gig on set. That is the, in a nutshell, what the acting aspect is. But people know show business and don't know the business of show. Now, the business of show is all of the stuff you don't see us do, which is the headshots. It's uh, building up your credits, your resume. It is having your demo properly prepared with the right flow, ebb and flow, and, and allowing them to see as much of you as they can in this two to three minute trailer, basically. It is uh, securing an agent. I have an agent in LA, Chicago, and in Atlanta, or having a manager that can keep all of those teams together or having a PR team that will promote you when you have a production coming up. Uh, it is hairstylist, makeup, all of that other stuff when you're doing red carpet events, which I've done several of. That's the behind the scene, networking, going to events, making sure that you're collaborating with people uh, and always, always constantly honing the craft and adding different skill sets. I actually write and produce now as a result of understanding the entertainment industry, the networking aspect, and how I can make myself even more valuable by having additional skills to offer a production company, a network, or a producer. Awesome. Well, thank you for breaking that down for us. Now, you are yeah. very vocal about your faith. Um, you mm -hmm. talk about that a lot. Um, yes. How do you incorporate your faith when it comes to your career? Okay, that is, you know, it's a, it's an interesting uh, way that I believe, and I call God daddy. I believe that daddy gave that to me. He gave me a unique way to do it. I don't hide my faith, but I don't have to wear a t-shirt or a hat to publicize my faith. I live out my faith. Mm -hmm. There have been times I have been in auditions and I've sat next to, this is when we were in person, you know, that was pre-COVID. Um, I'd, I'd sit next to an actress or an actor and I could tell they were nervous. And I just, I just reach over or whisper in their ear, may I pray for you? So, and they look at me like we're auditioning for the same role, but I'm like, there's no competition. Mm. I just want to help you with your nervousness or your, your concern. So I would pray for them. And then there were times like when I was shooting Ally McBeal or City of Angels back in LA in the day that the extras, I would invite them in my trailer. They always wanted to see it. And I'd say, Hey, I'm doing Bible study. And so they would study in my trailer and the PA would know to come and get them. And then there are other ways that I am just on set, being a light, not preaching the gospel, not preaching Jesus Christ, but I am being a light. I'm being uh, encouraging. If somebody's down or if there's a negative vibe in the atmosphere, I'm always trying to regulate the room to what I believe would be a good safe space 
and an encouraging space. And um, and of course, online on social media, I serve Maravation, which is a combination of motivation and inspiration. I serve it uh, daily, but I do a segment called Maravational Monday. So every Monday, I generally release some content on all channels just uplifting people, letting them know um, that they're not alone, letting them know that the end is always better than whatever the middle may be. So awesome. Thank you so much for being such a fabulous example. That is that's so beautiful. Thank you for Thank that. Thank you. Thank you. So what's next for you? What you what you got going on next that you can talk about? Because I don't want to get you in trouble now. So what? what is <laughs> yeah, next? we ain't getting in no trouble. <laughs> We're not getting in. Oh, no uh, well, right now. OK, so currently streaming is um, my newest segment of Kingdom Business. Uh, and we're hoping that we get to come back because we got to find out what happened to Danny. Right. My daughter in uh, Kingdom Business. I play a character named Joyce Williams. Mm -hmm. And then I'm also in um, uh, Love and Murder. Uh, starring Tay Diggs. It's uh, about Atlanta Playboy. It's based on a true story. So that's also currently streaming. And my newest uh, project that'll be out sometime this year, I don't know the month, is House of Pain. Uh, I play a professor on Tyler Perry's House of Pain. And then I just did two short films. So waiting to find out when they'll be released. Uh, one that I could talk about is called White Runts. And it was actually a short film uh, directed and produced by a New York film student. So I was excited to be able to to work with this young lady named Skyla. And uh, and then I've got a commercial coming out. So those are the things. And I'm in the, oh, I'm in the uh, the runnings for a possible uh, show here in Chicago, a stage production at come, the Stepping. Come on, Booked and Busy. <laughs> <laughs> we excited, we excited. Yes, yes. <laughs> what words of encouragement can you give someone who wants to get into the craft of acting or into the entertainment business itself? Sure. Uh, the first thing I would say is Make sure this is what you want to do, because what you see us do, those that you see promoting their shows, those that you see maybe receiving awards and those that you see on the small and the big screen, you have no idea how many no's it takes to get to that. Yes. So make sure that you can't be discouraged. Mm. Uh, Quincy Jones had a quote that said something like, uh, if you can be discouraged, you should be discouraged. So that means you need to make up your mind that this is the thing that you are supposed to do, that you are called to do this or driven that there is like you need it like you need oxygen. Because if you make your mind up to do a thing and you stick to it, the perseverance and the dedication will ensure that you will at least have some joy in it because you feel impelled to do it. And the nose won't throw you off track and won't turn you around and make you change your mind about the thing you want to do. So make sure you're sure about it too. study. You don't have to go to college for it, but make sure you're studying, go to a class, network with some people, find out what classes they're in, and then always practice. I practice whether I am called on an audition or not. I pull out a script and I will I will work the character, I'll learn, and then I'll look at what I did three years ago with that character and what I do today because my life experiences matter. Casting directors aren't casting the best memory. They're casting the person that embodies a character. Mm -hmm. So don't get tripped up on learning lines and memorizing stuff. Find out what idiosyncrasies of yours can be shared in that character so that your auditions come alive for those that are already doing this business. Bring some of you to the role because that's what they want to see. Yes, thank you so much for that. If people want to get more of this encouragement or more of you, because they need to get it, um, and people want to follow your journey, they want to know more about you, how can they do so? Well, the one way is maragale.com. That's M-A-U-R-A-G-A-L-E, no Y, no I, Gail, like shoes on sale. You can go to my website where all of my handles are, but I'm also available at Mara Gale on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And also I have a Facebook fan page, The Real Mara. So would love to welcome you to this community, also on threads and on, uh, what's the other one? Yeah, I think that's it. Threads, Instagram, <laughs> Facebook, and Awesome. <laughs> yes. Well, Mar, thank you so much for taking the time out today to talk with us here. We definitely appreciate you and we celebrate you and all the greatness that you have in store and that you've given to the world. So thank you so much for everything. Thank you for having me. You know, I love me some you waiting to work with you, waiting to work with you. So this right here is the beginning. Yes, <laughs> let's get it. Definitely. Let's get it. All right, everyone. I am Carlton T. Clay and it's to celebrate black excellence where we celebrate black excellence every day. Have a good one.